G'day guys, my name's Dave from Guitar Zero to Hero and in this video I'm going to be teaching you the best and easiest ways of recording the acoustic guitar. In this video I'll be showing you four different setups you can use to record the acoustic guitar, varying in budget and level of expertise. Now when recording the acoustic guitar there is no single right way of doing it. Like the saying goes, there's more than one way to skin a cat. So the method and the setup that you choose will really depend on the sound you're going for and the budget that you have. Now before we can even record anything, we'll need to install a door, otherwise known as a digital audio workstation onto our computer. Now the digital audio workstation helps you record, edit and layer your guitar tracks. So it's a very important piece of this recording puzzle. Now, if you're using a Mac, GarageBand is the obvious choice. It comes pre-installed, it's super easy to use, and it's an amazing program. Now, if you're using a PC, then I recommend Cakewalk. It's 100% free, it's a very powerful program. It is a little bit harder to use than GarageBand, for example. For everything that I mentioned in this video, I'll leave a link in the description below to help you guys out. Okay, so let's get stuck into setup number one. Now this is probably the most budget friendly option and it simply involves getting a USB mic. Now the one I have here is a Rode NT-USB. There's plenty of others out there but I really like the NT-USB. It's very simple to use. So with this setup, all you'll need is the USB mic, a mic stand and that's it, you're good to go. Now in terms of mic placement, there's many different options to explore and again, there's no single right way it will just depend on what you like best. So I'd encourage you to experiment yourself and see what sounds best to you. Now for me personally, I like to have the mic about a foot away from the guitar. I'll place it sort of in front of the 12th fret, but what I'll do is I'll angle it so it's just pointing towards the very end of the fretboard here. So not into the sound hold, but just right on the edge. So I'll just sort of adjust that until it's into a spot that I like. So it's sort of like at a 45 degree angle to the end of the fretboard. And that's the first mark placement. So let's hear how that sounds. Another common mic placement is putting the mic right in front of the sound hole, but angling the mic so that it's pointing towards the 12th fret. Now you don't want the mic pointing directly at the sound hole. It needs to be at about a 45 degree angle towards the 12th fret. So let's hear how that sounds. And finally, another common mic placement is to have the mic sitting right in front of the 12th fret and pointing right directly at the 12th fret as well. So this can often result in a thinner sound. So depending on whether you want your guitar to be sort of a texture piece uh, within a mix, then this might be a better option because you're not going to get a lot of that low end from the sound hole. But this is another option and again, it just depends on your preference and what you like. So let's hear how this one sounds.
Now there is one placement of the mic that I would avoid. And this is something that a lot of beginners actually do. So what they'll do is they'll get their mic and they'll put it as close as possible to the sound hole right in front of it. And what's gonna happen here is that all the air, all the sound is just gonna get blasted right into the mic and you're gonna get this really boomy sound and it's really not ideal. So definitely avoid having your mic right in front of the sound hole. Now you gotta think, when you're listening to someone play the acoustic guitar, you don't put your ear right up to the sound hole, do you? So the same thing applies when miking the acoustic guitar. So pros and cons of this setup, well, it's super simple. You only need to buy a couple of things, the USB mic and a mic stand, and you're good to go. It's also probably the most budget-friendly option in this video, and you can actually use this mic to record vocals, light percussion, harmonica, any other acoustic instruments around the house, you can use this mic and it'll sound great. Now the cons to this setup are that you can only record acoustic live instruments. So if you're trying to record line instruments like electric guitar or bass, then you won't be able to do it with this setup. Now let's move on to setup number two, and this is another budget friendly option. So all you'll need is a USB audio interface and an acoustic guitar that has a pickup in it. Now the audio interface that I'm using here is the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2, which is a super popular audio interface. It's really easy to use and it's at a pretty good price as well. Now the reason I recommend the Focusrite interface range is not only because they make great interfaces that are easy to use, but you also get a whole bunch of free software, free recording tools with the interface and their customer support is absolutely outstanding. Now using this method though, you are slightly limited to how good the pickup is on your acoustic guitar. You're not gonna get the 100% crisp raw sound of the natural acoustic guitar using this method because you're obviously processing that signal through the guitar's pickup and then into the computer. So let's hear how this setup sounds. I'm using a Cole Clark Angel 2 and these guitars are well renowned for their awesome pickups. So just bear in mind if you have a cheaper acoustic guitar with a pickup, those cheap pickups are probably going to sound a lot worse than this. All right, so what are the pros and cons of setup number two? Well, the pros are that it's a budget-friendly option. You only need to buy the audio interface and potentially a guitar cable if you don't already have one. The other positive is that mic placement isn't an issue. You can move around freely. You can play whatever you want. It's all gonna sound the same. So there's no mic placement issues to worry about. Now, the other pro for this setup is that you can also record electric and bass guitar signals right into the audio interface. And if you have amp modeling software on your computer, then that's all you'll need to record electric and bass guitar. Now, obviously the downside to this particular setup is that you're not getting that raw natural sound of the acoustic guitar. You're getting a slightly processed sound because of the pickup. And using this setup, you can't record vocals or anything like that either. Okay, so now let's move on to setup number three. And this is probably the most common and ideal setup for people trying to record the acoustic guitar. So what will you need? Well, you'll need a USB audio interface. So this is the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2, awesome interface. You'll need a condenser mic. Now the condenser mics that I recommend hands down for any person recording is the Rode NT1 or the Rode NT1A. So this is the Rode NT1A. I've had this mic for about 10 years and it has done me no wrong. It's an amazing versatile mic. Same goes with the Rode NT1. The Rode NT1 is slightly updated, a little bit better, but the Rode NT1A is an amazing mic as well. So those are the two mics from Rode that I recommend because they're great for guitar, vocals, pretty much anything. But I also do use the Rode NT3 for a lot of my tutorial videos. 
I love that mic, so that's another one you can check out. One little quick tip, when you're recording with a condenser mic like the Rode NT1 or Rode NT1A, you need to provide phantom power to these mics for them to work. Now, any audio interface that you get will provide phantom power, and there'll usually be a button on the front that you can push to provide phantom power to the mic. Now, the quick tip is that you should make sure everything is connected first before you push the phantom power button. The phantom power button usually says 48 volts or something like that. Now, the reason why you wanna make sure everything's connected first before you push that button is because if you don't do that, you have the phantom power button on and then you connect the mic, you can sometimes damage the microphone. So be sure to have everything connected first and then push the phantom power button on. All right, so let's hear how this setup performs using the three different mic placements that I taught you earlier in the video. Okay, so pros and cons of this setup. For pros, this is a super versatile setup. You can pretty much record everything using all this equipment. So you can record vocals, acoustic guitar, electric guitar, bass, light percussion, you name it. This setup can pretty much cover it all except for probably live drums. This setup also allows flexibility with the mic that you use as well. Whereas the USB setup, you're stuck with that one mic. With this setup, you can mix and match different mics depending on what you wanna record. So that's a positive as well. Now there's not too many downsides to this setup. This is an excellent setup. I would say the only bad thing is that you need to get more equipment. So you need a mic, you need a mic stand, you need an XLR cable, and you need the USB interface. But other than that, this is the ideal setup. Finally, let's look at setup number four, which requires the most amount of equipment, the most amount of effort, but can sometimes produce the best results. And basically what we're doing is we're upgrading from setup number three and we're recording with two microphones. So we're recording in stereo with this setup. And we're gonna be using two small diaphragm condenser mics. So essentially we'll be recording with two mics at the same time and panning one left and panning one right and you get this wide stereo sound and it sounds really full. Now Rode microphones have a wide range of matched pair microphones to suit pretty much any budget. So for the entry level, they have the M5 matched pair pencil mics. So these are really affordable, sound great. And then mid range, we have the NT5 matched pair microphones. And then finally, the upper range is the TF5. So I'm gonna use the TF5 in this demonstration, but rest assured that all these mics sound great. So you're gonna get a good result with any option you choose. So I'll teach you two different mic placements for this stereo setup. Now the first one is going to be an XY marking pattern. 
So with the XY marking pattern, basically what you're going to do is cross over the marks like this. So that's the end of the microphone there and you're going to cross them over like that so that there's a 90 degree angle between them as you can see here. And you're going to point them towards the sound source like that. So with this XY marking pattern, what I'm gonna do is put it right in front of the sound hole. But because both mics are pointing out a 45 degree angle, this one's actually hitting 12th fret and this one's hitting the bridge of our guitar. So we're not getting all that boomy bass going in. Now the second method for recording in stereo is called spaced pairs. So basically we're going to be spacing our mics out instead of having them right on top of one another like that. So with spaced pairs, you're gonna be pointing one sort of at 12th fret and you can point the other one around the bridge. Now spaced pairs can be a little bit tricky because you might run into phase cancellation issues. Now what happens with phase cancellation is basically that one mic will get the sound source a little bit later than the first mic. And what happens is that those sound waves will cancel each other out and what will result is a much thinner sound. So you have gotta be really careful. And to fix this issue, a general rule of thumb is the three to one rule. So if you're spacing your mics, the three to one rule says that the second mic should be no less than three times the distance the first mic is to the sound source. So as a quick example, if your first mic here is 20 centimeters away from the sound source, then your second mic should be at least three times that distance. So three times 20 is 60, 60 centimeters away at least from the first mic. So generally by adhering to the three to one rule, you'll avoid phase cancellation issues. And that's another reason why I really like the XY pattern is because it's really simple and you don't need to mess around with spacing. Because the sound source is hitting both mics at the exact same time, you're not gonna run into phase cancellation issues. So this is a good technique right here if you don't wanna mess around with spacing. Again, there's no right way to do stereo marking. These are just two options for you to choose and experiment with. Okay, so pros and cons of this setup. Pros are obviously that you can get that wide stereo sound. So if you're recording a song that just has one guitar and vocals, then this is a great setup because you can really fill out that mix with stereo sound of the acoustic guitar. The other pro is of course that it's super versatile. So with the audio interface, then you can record electric guitar, bass, you've got two mics, so you can record a whole wide range of instruments like pianos, you can use these as overhead drum mics as well. The downside is of course that there's a lot more equipment involved here to record just the acoustic guitars. You're gonna need another mic stand if you're gonna do spaced pairs. You're gonna need a stereo bar if you're gonna do the XY pattern. So just a little more gear here obviously, so a bit more expensive than the other setups. So just to quickly recap the four setups, the first one is using a USB mic. The second one is plugging your acoustic guitar directly into a USB interface. The third is using a USB interface and a condenser mic. And finally, the fourth method is using two condenser mics, 
so you can record in stereo. It just depends on what sound you're going for and your budget. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'll leave links to everything I've mentioned in this video in the video description as a reference. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, that like button, and I'll see you guys next time on Guitar Zero to Hero. Cheers.